Hi everybody and welcome to this week's video. This week we're uh, still in Garibaldi. I'm going to swing by the uh, Maritime Museum. And if you're offended by guns, don't watch till the end of the video. And if you love guns, definitely watch till the end of the video. Because the Maritime Museum has quite a, quite a neat, neat um, gun collection. In, in, you know, my opinion. They don't bother me at all. Mom and Dad go out target shooting. And, uh, they go places it's really fun to sniff and pee on stuff. So, it's all good by me. But anyway, we're, uh, as always, trying to get a bit more of me in the videos. And, uh, unfortunately, the, uh, Maritime Museum has a service dogs only policy. So, we'll, uh, we'll take a look around the outside just a little bit, and then, uh, Dad will go inside and, uh, take everybody inside to shoot. And Dad did talk to him, and, and, well, there's places I can go and places I can't, but there's the thumb, bleh, the thumbnail shot. And, Dad will take you inside now and uh, show you all around. Actually pretty neat. Bit of a fun place for sure. There's uh, lots of really neat stuff in the museum. I, I cannon right off the bat. And an old hard hat diving suit just just right over there. Lots of models. Fair, fair bit of information about the Coast Guard and, and the fishing industry and what you would expect in a in a small port, uh, you know, museum. And of course the. Uh, the Coast Guard, anywhere on the Oregon coast, is uh, a vital part. We'll, we'll see the uh, a little memorial in another room for, you know, fishermen that uh, didn't make it back in. Which, you know, we, we've seen that in Charleston. And, and most, most every port has uh, a little memorial like that because... Uh, it's it's the nature of, of of the business. Anyway, this is uh, more about the people that didn't make it back in, and just kind of how it was done way back in the day. And all those little boats. All those little salmon trawlers. That was uh, that was a family business for generations and generations, and uh, up and down the Oregon coast. Not so much anymore. They, they kind of changed the regulations and stuff to where it's it's tough. It clams for clammy people. You know, somebody was having a lot of fun that day right there. Yeah, there's a salmon trawler with the trolling poles out. You can definitely, uh, definitely see how all that works. This place. And, of course, we don't get to see all of it. And the Lady Washington. It is, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you, you know Dad loves the Lady Washington. He, he worked on it for, for a while there. And, and, you know, played pirate on the weekends and, and played with school kids on the, during the week. So, teaching them history. That's what the Lady does now. A, a replica of the original boat. 
the, the reason this museum has so much about it is this was the uh, Garibaldi it was the, the first place that the uh, Lady Washington made landfall on the west coast after coming around the horn we sailed uh, there, there's a picture of her and more pictures of her it's a, a pretty interesting history on the boat if uh, if you look back at it and the two different rigs that she had it's a lot about uh, you know, early sailing ships Pretty interesting. And kind of what they were. Uh, a lot of trade going on with the uh, local people that were here at the time. They uh, basically were trading sea otter belts because that's what the Chinese wanted. Chinese kind of had most of the stuff that everybody else wanted, so. You know, tea, silk. All that, back in the, back in those early trading days. Kind of how the ships were set up. But, and, you know, sea otters, because, well, that, that was the big ticket item. <laughs> One, one sea otter pelt was, was worth, uh, you know, a guy's wages for a long time. So. I believe that's Columbia Red Aviva? That, that's, well, that's the lady there, but the bigger boat was the Columbia Red Aviva, and, uh, that's actually the boat that the Lady Washington was named after. And all their, all their navigating tools. It's pretty fascinating if you get into the history of it. Then, the sea otter belt, and the fur is very, very soft. No doubt about that. But the sea otters live in, in pretty frigid waters, so they uh, have to have good fur, kind of like me, to stay warm. Yeah, like I was saying, a I, I, I pretty fair amount about the lady. She, yeah. And that, that's not a wheel off a, that, that's off a steamboat or something there. Or a big ship. Kind of funny looking at those tools. Dad, Dad has a lot of those tools in his toolbox. He doesn't work on too many wood boats anymore, but there's just not a lot of them to work on. So, but he did that for years and years. And little swivel guns and a figurehead. That yeah, was part of. Pretty good luck on a boat or a ship. If you know the difference between a ship and a boat, leave it in the comments. And and there is a difference. It's it's real simple. Dad'll. Uh, oh, I'm not sure how. how I, I, I don't know how Dad can do that. Leave an answer somewhere. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe pin one in the comments or something. Or maybe let everybody know at the end of the video. It is kind of funny seeing this stuff on the walls because. It, it, it kind of looks like dad's shop. A bunch of that stuff is just, you know, 
and sitting in dad's shop. It's just not, you know, behind glass in the case. <laughs> dad usually has to clean it up. Just because we live in the Northwest, and so, uh, rust is something you just fight all the time, so. Yeah, it does a pretty good job, but every once in a while for, you know, stuff that just hardly ever gets used. Yeah. The Native Americans that lived here? I, I believe that's the right terminology, and... Yeah, Dad shot kind of a lot about this. There's, uh, in the pirate stuff that we do, the Vikings made a very similar chair to this. Kind of a, uh, kind of a two-piece chair that just slips together. Quite the interesting setup there. That, that looks like it might catch halibut. Those are big hooks. That, that looked like it might be good for halibut. And just all the cool old tools. I'm not sure exactly why they had these... Uh, Korean blinds in here, but we'll, we'll use them to make a transition to uh, all, the, all the guns that they had. They're, they had really a lot of a lot of different guns, which which is pretty interesting too. They, they, you know, who knew they made so many different ones? I I certainly didn't. I mean, you know they've made a lot of guns over the years, but this is kind of fascinating. And a, a lot of this stuff kind of a little bit newer than the Lady Washington days. We'll try and get the... Uh, Name cards too. I, I apologize for the uh, reflections, but when they put stuff behind glass, there's just not a lot you can do. I, I, you know, it's just Dad with a camera, so he's swinging the camera the best he can. Hopefully, I, you know, you can pause the video and uh, see something if if you want to take a closer look. I do want to give a, a quick shout out to all the new subscribers and everybody who watches. It uh, does the Pyrenees heart good. It really, it really does. So just some, some very interesting weapons. You know, guns, weapons, you know. And hopefully you can see the little name card. You, you might have to pause the video there. but it, It's hard with the reflection in the window, but... And there was just so many different ones. It, it was just... Very interesting. The the slight little differences in, in, you know, this one and that one and that one and that one and that one. Rather fascinating. And it was just whole bunches of them, that's for sure. So if, you, if you're not a gun nut, you, you probably clicked out by now, but if you are, check this out. That, that, that's a bit of a cannon right there. The 
there's, there's a little name tag up there, you know, info tag there. What, what's that say? Se- 70, 74 caliber, I think? Something like that? Oh, that's crazy. But anyway. Then a few more. But wait, there, there's still more. Oh, that's a cute little one there. Mom would like that. No, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> that, that's funny looking right there. I don't care who you are. But this isn't a huge museum, so there's there's not a fantastic amount of, to see, but a lot of really neat stuff to see. I really, uh... Yeah, Columbus's ships. Indian Pinta, Santa Maria. Dad knows that stuff. I don't. But, you know, Dad does my voice, so I have to say thank you to the folks who, who brought those ship's wheels in. That's pretty amazing. And if you're through this way and, and stop by the museum, definitely uh, grab something out of the gift shop. We'll, we'll do a quick little spin around here and they, they actually have some, actually have some kind of neat stuff in the gift shop too. Not just the, I, they got the normal little toys and trinkets, but they actually got some kind of neat stuff too. That is, uh, since we're in the gift shop and, and this is a museum, we're, we're of course getting close to the end of this week's video. I, I sure hope everybody enjoyed it. So, a little treat box for the kids. But that's going to about do it for this week. So until next week, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until then, have fun, stay safe, cheers. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my videos, stick upon the thumbs up button. And for the newest, go ahead and paw that subscribe button. Thanks again. Cheers.